So here are the two French Bulldogs, crochet French Bulldogs, and one has a container already inside and one doesn't. So even if you decide you don't want to use the container, you can tell that just by looking at them, you can't tell which one has a container and which one doesn't. So it holds up pretty good with the stuffing. So yes, there's a little bit of stuffing in the body. The hidden compartment is on the behind. Just open it up and you can see that there's an inner compartment inside and a little stuffing between the inner and the outer compartment. There's the hidden slot where you put the coins in for your bank. For Eiffel, I have a little cute pet outfit. This is a small pet outfit, but I would recommend a medium size if you can, but this is what the small one looks like. And it says, Mommy's Little Rascal. And you can open up the back. And you can see that he has a orange juice jar that opens up, and you can pour the coins out and get whatever is inside out of the back side of the, or the top of the orange jar. And you can actually take out the orange jar container as well. Most of my dogs have movable legs, but with these, because we have the container opening, we don't make the movable legs. I just sewed the legs in place, and they look adorable. I'm about to put all of this stuff on Lilac. So this is Lilac, named after the color that she is. And she's going to have this small pet outfit. I'm going to have to squish her head to get the head through the opening of this small outfit. But I like the way the small outfits fit, but I bet they could even fit a medium-sized pet outfit. And then this is the container, the orange juice container that she's going to have. And I just made an opening here, so they have a slot opening for print coins into. And then this is her dog collar. She needs to have a large collar. Eiffel and Lilac both needed a large dog collar. And then I'm going to put this yarn ball with a hook jewelry clip on her. So here they are, all finished with their containers inside and their collars on. This one has a collar with the name Lilac, and then this one has a collar named Eiffel. I also have a charm with the yarn ball and the crochet hook on this one, Lilac. The bow is sold separately and um, it clips on to the head. The outfits are also sold separately. I used small pet outfits and they seem to work fine. This one says sits and giggles and the other one says mommy's little rascal. And you can't tell that they have containers inside and they're actually banks, coin banks. So for this crochet project you're going to need your three and a half millimeter crochet hook as well as a tapestry needle or darning needle and a pair of scissors. I chose 21 millimeter safety doll eyes. These have a glittery blue around them, really pretty. And I like the ones with the plastic or the metal backings. Those work best, in my opinion. And also you're going to need a nose. So this is a 25 millimeter safety nose. You're also going to need just one sheet of the... This is a white felt that I'm going to be using just a very small square behind the eye, so you don't need much at all. Here you can see where I used the white felt behind the eye, so you can see that there's not much that you're going to use. So as you can see, I made a white and black one, and on video tutorial, I'm going to be showing you a pastel purple one with the white. And then any charms or dog tags or collars or outfits are sold separately. If you're making yours into a bank, then you, you're going to need the orange juice container. I use the plastic orange juice container. I go through a lot of orange juice. <laughs> and you can wrap the main portion with duct tape. You can, they have different colors too. I only had this silver. But if you wanted to do it blue or pink, or they have all kinds of different colors at the craft store. So I just chose what I had on hand. And then I used washi tape to kind of cover the opening that opens up. So you can have an exit for all the coins to come out here. And then you could put the coins in here. And I'll show you how to make the body so that you could fit this inside of the body. And it will be removable too. But it's optional. You don't have to do this. So I'll show you how to make the body without it as well. So the yarn that I chose is a Karen One Pound. This is a really beautiful violet or lilac color. 
It's a soft purple. And I used the white that I had on hand. I only had Bernat Sport White Baby Yarn. So I'm using that for the alternate white color. You can choose any pink that you want for the tongue. So this one is just a really pretty red heart metallic and it's a pink colored sparkle. You can see the sparkle in the yarn itself. And this is optional, but if you want different color purples for the spots, you can do that as well. So an important thing to remember is that different yarn choice or different crochet hook size will alter the, si the size of your work. So I'll give you the size that I used for the black and white as well as for my purple or lilac colored French Bulldog. You will need a black colored yarn of your choice, whatever you have, if you have one in your stash. I just have this basic yarn. It's a medium four style yarn for the mouth. So you just need a little bit of it. So we're going to start with the snout, but I wanted to show you that there's a difference in size between the white colored yarn and the medium four style yarn that I chose for the violet color. So I'm going to give you measurements in case you want to use a medium four white colored yarn that you'd be able to use that yarn instead of the Bernat Baby Sport. So again we're starting with the snout, so you're going to need your white colored yarn or whatever color that you're using for the snout. And then you're just going to fold it over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and cinch the loop around your crochet hook. Then you're going to make a chain. So for on video tutorial I'm just going to show you four of them. You just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for one chain, two, three, and four. So now you just need a, need a starting chain that measures approximately four and a half inches. For mine, I'm going to make a chain of 21. So now I have a chain of 21. This is what mine looks like, and it measures four and a half inches. So you would make a chain so that it measures approximately four and a half inches if you're using a different style of yarn. If you're using the same style of yarn as me, then you would start with a chain of 21. Then you're going to take and count back from the hook one, two. You're going to go into the second chain from the hook, bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both loops for a single crochet. Then you're going to go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, and then make a single crochet. And you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across. And when you finish this first row, you should have a total of 20 stitches or one less stitch from your starting chain. So since my starting chain was a 21, I'm going to have 20 stitches after finishing this first row. So now this is how my work looks. And now I want to maintain my stitch count for six rows. So to move up to the second row, and I'm going to call it my first row only because I'm going to be making six total starting with this row. So you're going to chain one, turn your work, and then you can see how you have a little bit of an upslope on the stitch beneath the chain one. You're not going to go into that stitch, you're going to go into the next stitch over. So go into that next stitch over, bring up a loop, make a single crochet. So that first chain one counts as your first stitch for this first row of the six that we're going to be making, maintaining a stitch count of 20 or whatever stitch count that you had for the previous row. So that counts as my second stitch. Let me double check, I lost count. Yeah. So this is the chain one, and then I'm going into the next stitch for my second single crochet, next stitch for my third, and I should be maintaining the stitch count that I had from the previous row, which is 20. And I'm going to be making six rows with a stitch count of 20, starting with this second row. So when you reach the end 
of this second row. Come back and I'll show you how to move up to the next row. So now we just finished that row and you should still have a stitch count of 20. Now we need five more rows. So to move up to the next row, you're just going to chain one, turn your work, and you're going to keep repeating this, maintaining your stitch count for five more rows. So one single crochet into the next stitch, one single crochet into the next stitch, and one single crochet in every stitch back across. And then when you reach the end, you chain one, and then turn your work and repeat until you finish five more rows, maintaining the stitch count that you had for your first row. So now the height of your work should be one and a half inches. So one and a half inches. If it's larger than that, then you need to make less rows with the stitch count. I made six rows with a stitch count of 20. So you may need less than that to make sure that it measures one and a half inches. So now for the next row, we're going to decrease the row by one stitch. So to do that, you're not going to chain one to start. You're just going to turn your work. Then you're going to go into the next stitch and make a single crochet. And then you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across. And that will give you a stitch count of 19, or one less than your previous row's stitch count. So now you should have finished a stitch count of 19. Now you're going to turn your work again, no chain one, turn your work, make a single crochet into the next stitch, and one single crochet in every stitch back across. And when you finish this row, you should have a stitch count of 18. Now you should see that your work is forming a little slight triangular along the edges because we're decreasing by one stitch. So we're going to make one more row where we decrease by one stitch. So you're not going to chain one. Just turn your work, make a single crochet into the next stitch, and one single crochet in every stitch back across. And when you finish this row, you should have a total stitch count of 17 or one less than your previous row. So now we're going to maintain the stitch count of 17 for three rows. So you have to chain one, turn your work, and make a single crochet into the next stitch, and one single crochet in every stitch across. So again you need three rows where you chain one, make a single crochet into the next stitch, and one single crochet into the next stitch, maintaining your stitch count from the previous row. So I'll be maintaining a stitch count of 17. So now this is what your work should look like. You have a little bit of a slight triangular edge on both sides and it measures approximately three inches. So it's approximately three inches in size. Each of these boxes is an inch. So now we're going to continue crocheting around the side of the snout. So you're just going to turn your work and we're going to work down the side of the rows. And you're going to evenly space a single crochet into every stitch along the side. So go right into this first side stitch and make a single crochet. And you're just going to make one single crochet evenly spaced all along the side of the snout. And when you reach the first corner, I'll show you how to turn the corner and work crochet along the bottom of the snout. So this is how mine looks working across the side of the snout. Now I have my last stitch along the side. I'm going to make two single crochet into that stitch. And then I'm going to turn the work so that the bottom is facing up. I'm going to work behind the loose yarn end too to crochet. So you go into the next stitch, go behind your loose yarn end, bring up a loop, and make two single crochet into the same stitch. So each corner you have two single crochet before and after that corner stitch. Then you go into the next stitch and make one single crochet in every stitch until you reach the opposite corner. So now you can see how I worked the first side, the bottom of the snout. Now I'm in the corner before the next side. I have my last stitch along the bottom. I'm going to make two single crochet into that stitch. 
that same stitch, then turn my work, and then in the next stitch on the side, I'm going to make two single crochet in the same stitch. Then resume one single crochet evenly spaced along the opposite side until I reach the next corner. So now you know you can make two single crochet into the same stitch and then turn the corner and two single crochet into the first stitch along the top. And that just helps the corners lay flat. Then you're just going to finish making one single crochet in every stitch back to where you started. So you should have finished that first round where you put two single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the next stitch around the corner and then you're making one single crochet in every stitch around. Now my stitch count was 69. As long as you're close to that one or two close to the 69 because you evenly spaced single crochet stitches on the side, so that may have your count a little bit off from mine. That's okay. Just maintain your stitch count now. One single crochet in every stitch around for four rounds. So now you're going to make four rounds of only one single crochet in every stitch, maintaining your stitch count, and then you can see how it forms a cup. Then, after you finish your fourth round, go ahead and make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. Just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook. Then you can finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the snout onto the head. And you just cinch down that knot. You can remove your yarn marker. And then we're going to place the safety dog nose. I'm using a 25 millimeter safety dog nose for mine. And it has a metal backing. So you want to take the smaller portion of the snout facing upright. Here's the wider portion towards the bottom. And then I placed my nose right at the top. And then above the nose there are one, two, three, four, five rounds. So down below the fifth round you can see the top of my nose. Once you're happy with the placement it needs to be centered too. So make sure that you have the even distance from the right and the left. Center your nose and once you're happy you can take and place your safety latch onto the back of the nose. So I love these safety latches, they just cinch right down. And I've never had a problem with them coming out either. So I really like the metal and the plastic backings. So now you just want to get your black yarn onto your tapestry needle so we can make the mouth. And then you want to take your tapestry needle, come up from the wrong side, directly under the, the nose. So make sure you're centered and directly beneath the nose with your tapestry needle. And then bring the yarn through. Leave enough of the yarn on the wrong side for tying a knot. I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot on the back. Oh, I'm going to wait until I go down then because I don't have another yarn in to sew it to. So now I'm just going to go straight down, and I want to go down four rounds. So here's two, four, go straight down and back towards the wrong side. And now you can take and tie a knot on the inside. Make sure you don't tangle your white colored yarn. Now you can take oops, tangling my white yarn. We're going to make the upside down V portion so we're going to come up to the side. Make sure that you're still on the very bottom round, not the cupped portion. That goes, goes under. So make sure you're right at that edge of the first round of the snout, or first row, I should say, of the snout. So that's four down at an angle. And then come up with your yarn. 
and then go back in the center and then you're going to go equal the distance so make sure it's about 4 over so around 4 over to make sure that you're symmetrical both sides are equal you don't have a crooked frown and then go back in the center and then you can tie a knot on the inside and trim your sewing black yarn and the mouth is fixed now you can set the snout aside because we're going to make the tongue and I'm just using my red heart metallic pink colored yarn I love this color it has a glittery look to it and we're going to start with a magic circle so you just take the yarn, drape it across your four fingers, use your thumb to stabilize, then wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers, and then hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. Then take your crochet hook, go right under those two loops around your finger, bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to place six single crochet into the magic circle. So there's one. There's two, three, four, five, and six. Then you're going to take your forefinger and your thumb, hold the base of the six single crochet. You have these two loops on the opposite side. Go ahead and pull on one of them. If it doesn't close, let go and pull on the other one, but this one's closing. Don't worry if you don't get it completely closed, just close it as much as you can. Then let go and pull on the loose yarn end, and then that will close up the center of the magic circle. So we're not working in rounds. You can see how you have a half moon shape. You're going to chain one, turn your work, and then you're going to make two single crochet into the next stitch, and two single crochet into every stitch across to the opposite side. And then I'm just going to make one single crochet into the very last stitch on the end. And then I'm going to go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to sew the tongue in place. And then you can pull on that center for the magic circle to completely close. And then you can decide which side you want for the right side. I'm going to use this as the right side or the side that shows towards the person looking at it. Then we're going to take and sew it in place. So I'm going to sew the middle portion first. So I'm going to get the loose yarn end of the middle portion from the magic circle. And then I'm going to position it how I want it. So I'm going to have it kind of against the side of the frown. And make sure you don't cover the black yarn for the frown. You want that showing. So I'm going to bring the center through, and then I'm going to get the long end that I left for sewing. And I'm only going to sew along the edge of the tongue. So I don't want to sew the flat portion. You want that to be free. So you just kind of sew the edge of the tongue along the black frown. And you don't want to cover the mouth, so make sure you're just underneath the frown portion. And then once you have it sewn in place, you can take and tie a knot on the wrong side. And then you can trim the loose yarn ends. And then you have your tongue in place. So you can decide if you want your tongue on the other side if you want. You just position your tongue wherever you want to have it. So now you can set the snout portion aside while I show you how to make the white strip. So the white strip 
is this portion right here that goes behind the snout and onto the head of the dog. So now we're going to use the white colored yarn and you're going to fold it over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down. And then cinch the loop around your crochet hook and we're going to make a chain. I'm just going to show four of them on video tutorial. So you yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for one chain, two, three, four. For mine, I started with a chain of eight and it measures approximately two inches in width. So you want it to be two inches in width. Then you're just going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. and then one single crochet into the next stitch and one single crochet in every stitch back across which should end up with a stitch count of seven for your first row. So this is what my work looks like so far. Then you're going to chain one, turn your work, make a single crochet into the next stitch, and one single crochet into every stitch back across and we're going to work a total of 10 rows with a stitch count of 7. So this one that we're working right now is the first row so we'll need 9 more. And we have a stitch count of 7 so make sure that you're maintaining your stitch count of 7. So I have two more stitches remaining. Let me double check. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that was the last one of stitch count of seven. So then you just chain one, turn your work, and that chain one counts as your first stitch. Then you're going to go into the next stitch over and make a single crochet and one single crochet in every stitch back across. Now this is row two of the seven and you just need eight more for a total of ten rows with a stitch count of seven and then come back. So now this is how your work should look and you can see how you have two, four, six, eight, ten and then the measurement is approximately two and a half inches in height and then it's approximately two inches wide. Now we're going to increase the number of stitches in the row so the first thing that you're going to do for the next row is chain one, turn your work, and then you're going to make a single crochet into the same stitch. So you're actually going to go into the same stitch right here, right beneath the chain one, and then bring up a loop and make a single crochet. Then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch and one single crochet in every stitch back across and that will increase your stitch count for this row by one. So when you finish this row, you should have a total of eight stitches. So make sure you have a total of eight stitches. Then we're going to move up to the next row. So you chain one, turn your work, and then you're not going to go into the same stitch on this side. You're going to go into the next stitch over. So you want to go in the next stitch over and make a single crochet. So that's your second stitch, next stitch, third single crochet, next stitch four, next stitch five, next stitch six, next stitch seven, and then you have your last stitch which you're going to make two single crochet into the same stitch. And then you'll have a stitch count of nine. So now you have a stitch count of nine and you see how you're making the spot grow to the side which is what we want. So now you're going to chain one, turn your work, make a single crochet in the same stitch. So you want to go into the same stitch and make a single crochet and then one single crochet into the next stitch and one single crochet in every stitch back across and when you finish this row you should have a total of 10 stitches in the row. 
So you can see how I'm keeping a straight edge on the one side and then growing the spot on the other. So you can play around with this and create your own unique spot if you want to or just make it exactly like I'm making mine. So now you're going to move to the next row. So you chain one, turn your work, and this time you're going to go into the next stitch over. The chain one counts as your first stitch. Go into the next stitch and make a single crochet for your second. Then you make a single crochet into the next and you make a single crochet in every stitch except for the last stitch. In the last stitch you're going to make two single crochet into the same stitch. And when you finish this row you should have a stitch count of 11. So, so far I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, Sometimes the stitches are tricky, but you know you should have 11. There's 9. And then in the last stitch, you're going to make two single crochet in the same stitch to give you a stitch count of 11. Then you can chain 1, turn your work, and you're ready for the next row. So for this row, you have chain 1 as the first stitch. You're going to make a single crochet into the same stitch for your second stitch and then one single crochet into the next stitch for your third next single crochet and you're going to repeat one single crochet in the rest of the stitches and when you finish this row you're going to have a stitch count of 12. So now for the next five rounds we're going to maintain the stitch count of 12. So to move up to the next row you just chain one, turn your work go into the next stitch over and make a single crochet and then you're just going to make maintain the stitch count of 12 and you chain one to move up to the next row turn your work and then one single crochet into the next stitch and every stitch back across and again you're going to do that for five more rows maintaining a stitch count of 12 so this is what your work should look like then you can go ahead and finish off just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew this portion onto the head. So now you can set this with the snout and we're going to start with the head panels. So for my head I'm going to be making the front and the back panel the same way. So take whatever color that you want for your front and back panel. I'm using a very light purple pastel violet color. Then just take and fold it over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and then pull on the yarn strands to cinch the loop around your crochet hook. Then we're going to make a chain of 23. I'm just going to show you four of them on video tutorial again. Just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for one, two, three, four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 23 and then come back. Then after you have a chain of 23 you're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. And then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch and one single crochet in every stitch back across and that will give you a stitch count of 22. So now you should have 22 total stitches and mine measures approximately 12 to 13 centimeters. This one weighs, it measures about 13 centimeters so you want it to measure approximately 13 centimeters by 13 centimeters square. So 13 centimeters and then 13 centimeters height for your finished panels for the front and the back. They're both made the same way. So then to turn to move up to the next row, we're going to be maintaining the stitch count of 22. You chain one, turn your work, and then you're going to go into the next stitch over. So you don't want to go into the stitch beneath the chain one. So that would be right here. You want to go into the next stitch over. And then bring up a loop to make a single crochet. And then you just make one single crochet in every stitch back across, maintaining your stitch count of 22. And you're going to keep repeating that 
until you get a measurement of 13 centimeters by 13 centimeters. Then you can finish off. And then you will need a front and a back panel. So now you should have two panels, the front and the back panel, made the exact same way. And the measurements are about 5 inches by about let's see 6 inches by 5 inches. So 5 inches by 6 inches. Or it's also 13 centimeters by 15 centimeters. So that's the size that you want. Now for the side panel, you're going to start with your white colored yarn and you start the same way that you did for your front and back panel except that you're going to start with a smaller starting chain. So for mine, I started with a chain of 16 and it measures approximately 3 inches in width and the height is approximately 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 inches. And to get 6 inches, I made 30 rows of one single crochet in every stitch before I changed to the black colored yarn or the purple, whatever color you're using for your French Bulldog. So for mine I already finished off, but if you haven't finished off, all you have to do is with the loop on your hook, just bring up a, uh, the new color that you're going to be using. And then for mine I made a chain of one. And then I'm just going to tie a knot to join the two colors and I'm going to cut the previous color. So I already cut my white colored yarn. And now I'm going to start crocheting with the main color because under the dog's head I wanted the white color and then the main color is the portion that will go all around the head. So you can have fun with the colors and make them whatever color that you want for your unique French Bulldog. So then you just make a chain of one, turn your work, and then make a single crochet into the next stitch. And you can bury your loose yarn in, just go right into the next stitch, go behind the loose yarn ends, bring up a loop and make a single crochet. And then you just make one single crochet in every stitch back across. So I still have the 15 stitches in the row, which is what I started with, with the white. So you started with this chain, starting chain of 16, but because you made a single crochet into the second chain from the hook, it made it 15. So now you just chain one, turn your work, and then continue just making one single crochet in every stitch until you have the total number of rows that you want. When you come back I'll show you how many rows that I had and what measurement I have for mine. So now I finished 60 rows and it measures from the white portion up to the end 15 inches. And you want to double check and make sure that the white portion will go along the bottom of the head and then the purple portion or the main color goes all around the head or square. Then once you know that you have the right size you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull the yarn through just enough to bury into your work. So now we're going to make the face. So you want to need one of your square panels and just lay it so that the right side is facing up. This is one of the hardest parts is getting the face right. So I'm going to try to show you an easy way to make the face. We're going to start with the snout. So you need your snout and the front panel. And we're going to sew the bottom of the snout first. So we have a loose yarn end at the top so you can leave that for the, when you get ready to sew the top portion of the snout. So you're going to need a new yarn, white colored yarn or the same color as the snout in order to sew the bottom portion of the snout first. So you just get some of your white colored yarn on your tapestry needle or darning needle and then you're going to line up the bottom of the snout. Make sure that you have it centered. So you want the same number of stitches on each side showing. And then you want to line it up just above the last row So make sure that you have it centered. And then once you have it centered, you can start in the corner. Take your tapestry needle, go right into the corner. And then grab the bottom corner of the snout. 
and then go a stitch over. We're going to sew along the bottom of the snout, and then you could tie a knot on the wrong side. And then just turn it back over and then line it up again and then just take and sew all along the bottom of the snout only. So you just go in and out sewing along the bottom of the snout, securing the bottom of the snout in place and then come back. So now you have the bottom portion sewn in place. Just leave the yarn strand there. We're going to come back to it when we're ready to sew the sides of the snout. So now we're going to take in position. You want to count up the rounds or rows, I mean. So here's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So here's the 12th. And you want to line up the top of the snout with the 12th row. Then you're going to take, that's where you know you're going to be placing your snout, the top portion of the snout. So now you need your white strip and you want to place the white strip behind the snout. And then this top portion is going to fold on top of the head. So position it how you want. If you want more of the white portion going up on top of the head. And then you want to make sure that you place your eyes. So now we're going to get the safety doll eyes and place the white strip where we want it and the safety doll eyes where we want them. So now that we know where we want to place the eyes, make sure that you have the num same number of stitches on this side as you do on this side. You can always measure it too. And then once you know where you want your white portion, you can go ahead and sew the bottom portion of the white in place. Don't attach your safety latches yet for the eyes because we need to make the white felt that goes behind the eyes. So you're just using the eyes right now to kind of see where you would position the white strip. Once you have the position, you can take the same colored yarn and put it onto your tapestry needle and we're going to sew the bottom portion of the white strip in place. So I brought the loose yarn end towards the back of the panel and then I'm going to bring up the yarn from the wrong side. Make sure you leave enough for tying a knot. And then just tie a knot on the wrong side. Make sure you don't tangle all of your yarn. Then just take and reposition it. And then take and sew the bottom portion only. So the top portion you're not going to be able to finish sewing down until we get to the side panels, fixing the side panels. So right now you're just sewing the white strip in place, the lower part of the white strip. Now after you finish sewing the bottom portion of the white strip in place, we can go ahead and make the eyes. So you just need two rectangular white portions, squares, so that you can take and trim around the eye. So what I do is I just fold the square in half and then I'm going to cut a diamond in the center or a triangle that creates a diamond. Then you take your safety doll eye, go right through, and then you're just going to trim around the eye. And I usually leave some of the white portion sewing around the bottom. So I just cut and then I leave a little bit, like a millimeter or two, along the bottom. And you can trim it however you want. That's about how much I'm going to leave for mine. Then take it and place it right back where you had it. And now you're ready to place the safety latch. Then go ahead and repeat the same thing with the other eye. So now after you have the eyes placed and the white strip placed, you're ready to sew down the top of the snout. So you're going to get your long end, the loose yarn end that you left for sewing, or the same color of yarn as the snout, 
and put it onto your tapestry needle and then you're just going to line up the top of the snout just under the eyes and make sure that's even on both sides so you want the nose straight make sure that the nose is straight and then once you have it lined up and the nose is straight then you could take your tapestry needle and just go in and out and sew the top of the snout in place. Then after you finish sewing the top in place you can place craft stuffing into the snout in the sides of the snout then you can take and sew the sides of the snout in place. Make sure to leave about three stitches on the side of each snout. I mean, sorry, this, each side of the snout. <laughs> so after I sewed the one side of the snout in place, I went ahead and pushed the craft stuffing over. And you want to make sure you have enough craft stuffing into the edges of the first side that you sewed down. So you may need to add more stuffing on this side. And this is what it looks like when I'm all finished. You can see I left three stitches on each side of the head, I mean the snout, and it looks good. So now we need the head or the face to be um, with the right side facing up, and then you're going to get your side panel. We're going to sew the side panel in place to the head, the front of the head. So you just take the white portion is going to go under the snout. So what you're going to do is just get the white colored yarn on your tapestry needle or whatever color is the same as your strip that goes under the snout. Then you're going to take and fold the strip over on top so that the right sides are facing. Then you're going to line up the corner here and then take your tapestry needle, go into that stitch of the bottom of the head as well as the side strip panel and then bring the yarn through and tie a knot and we're just going to sew this portion of the strip first so it should line up all the way across to the opposite side so you just take your tap your tapestry needle and the same colored yarn as the strip and then just sew it in place. So when you finish sewing the bottom portion of the side panel, come back and then I'll show you how to line up the rest of the side strip for the head. But for now, we're just going to sew the white portion of the side strip to the front panel of the head. So now you should have the white strip sewn in place and this is what it looks like on the right side. You can see how it has a nice edge to it. You can't see the thread at all. So now we're going to line up the rest of the side panel. So the rest of the side panel is going to go around the head like this. So you want the white portion that goes on the side panel to face in, fold it down on top of the right side. You don't want it to be on the wrong side when you fix, every, fix so the um, sides and the top and the other side down around the head, forming a box. So the first thing that you want to do is just tie a knot with the loose yarn ends that meet up with the bottom side portion. And then the next thing you want to do is just line up the corner. So you take your tapestry needle and you have a loose yarn end in one of the corners. You can use that or just a stitch marker will work too or a safety pin. So now you want to line it up, make sure it's lined up. And then once you have it lined up, just take and tie a knot in the corner and that's just to help hold it in place. So you want to make sure that you have enough going all the way around. And then the other thing that you're going to do is the same thing with the other corner. So you're going to just get the same colored yarn on your tapestry needle. You only need a little bit. And then just take and fold down. Make sure you have enough that goes along the side here. And then just take 
and tie a knot with the yarn. And then you have the side panel ready to be sewed in place. And remember the white strip goes on the inside, the right side. Fold it down on, on top of the eyes to keep it from going on the wrong side. So then you can take the same colored yarn as the main color of your French Bulldog. Put it onto your tapestry needle. Make sure you have enough of yarn to sew with. And then you're just going to take and sew the side panel in place. Now the only thing, yeah, you're going to sew all around the side panel, sewing it to the front panel. So both sides and the top. So go ahead, finish sewing the side panel to the front panel, and then come back. So now I finished sewing all of the sides, and you can see that you have a nice seam all around the head. And if you want to, this is optional, but you can create a little wrinkle here, which I like the little wrinkle. So I'm going to show you how I form a little wrinkle. And you have to be careful with the wrinkle. You don't want to make an angry face, you know, so the expression is going to be important. So. I want a cute little frown like so I'm going to pinch it along the sides like this so now you just need your tapestry needle as well as the same colored yarn so we can make the little wrinkle so to make the wrinkle you just pinch a little bit like a centimeter of the front panel and you want to come in from the wrong side I'm going to come on top of the wrinkle with my tapestry needle and then bring the yarn through. Make sure you leave enough of a loose yarn end on the inside. Then you're going to take and go about a millimeter over and then go across and through the opposite side of the wrinkle, about a centimeter like I said. And then you just put a couple of stitches, go about a like a millimeter or two over, back to the back side and then the length of it is the centimeter. Then you can take and just bring the yarn through to the wrong side and just tie a knot. And then that'll hold the wrinkle in place. Then you just take and trim the loose yarn end and you see how you have your wrinkle and then you just repeat the same thing on the other side then after you have your wrinkles in place you can take and sew the white strip down on top of the head just make sure that you have it opened up completely and then lay the white strip on top and just sew it in place so now after you've finished sewing the white portion in place you can take and turn the work so that the right side is facing up and then join the two side the side panel to the other side and sew along the wrong side of it I'm just going to join this corner and then we'll be ready to sew the back panel of the head in place so now you can use either your purple or your white colored yarn to sew along the edge. I'm going to use my white colored yarn. So just take your white colored yarn and then you want to finish sewing. I'm not sure what this goes to. So I'm going to tie that off so it won't show on the right side. And then I'm going to join. And then tie to one of the loose yarn ends here. And then you're just going to sew the ends of the side panels together so there's not a hole. 
So go ahead and sew the side panels together and then I'll show you how to sew the back panel in place. So now for the back panel. So you're going to take your back panel and the right side is going to face in towards the face. So the wrong side is facing up. Then you're going to take, and we're not going to sew the bottom of the panel because you need to turn the head inside out. So you're just going to take the bottom loose yarn end. Someone just came to the door. <laughs> Put the tapestry needle on the loose yarn end and then go right into the corner. And then you want to sew it in place or just tie a knot to hold the corner there. Then you want the other side, the opposite side. Because you want it to line up. You don't want it to be crooked. So I just kind of use the loose yarn ends to help hold it in place. So each corner you need to do this. So here, just line up, make sure that it fits. Then take if you don't have a loose yarn end, then just take the same color, put a little bit on your tapestry needle, just like we did the front panel and the side panel. So one more corner here. So I'm going to get some of my purple yarn. So now I have all four corners tied down and I'm ready to sew the side panel in place. Now remember, you're not going to sew the bottom portion. You're only going to sew the side, the top, and the opposite side and then come back. So now after you finish sewing both sides and the top you can take and turn it back inside out so that the right side is facing you. And then you can take and put craft stuffing into the head and we'll be ready to start the ears. So go ahead add craft stuffing into the head so now this is what it looks like and it came out really um, good. I like how it came out and then I have the opening here. So we're going to leave that open. We're not going to close that yet until we're ready with the body. So you can just leave that open. And now just set this aside while we make the ears. So for the ears you're going to need four of the main color triangles, two for each ear. So I'm going to show you how to make one of these on video tutorial but you're going to need a total of four made the same way. So we're going to start with the main colored yarn and you're going to fold it over on itself to form a loop and then take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and cinch the loop around your crochet hook. Then you're going to make a chain of 15. I'm just going to show you four of them on video tutorial. So you yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for one two, three, four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 15 and then come back. So I have my chain of 15 and it measures approximately three and a half inches in width. Then you're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So just count back one, two, take your crochet hook, go into that second chain from the hook, bring up a loop and then complete your single crochet and then go into the next stitch bring up a loop and make a single crochet. And you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch back across. And when you finish this first row, remember the starting chain is not your first row. So we're making the first row now by making one single crochet in every stitch. And when you finish the first row, you should have a total stitch count of 14. So now you should have a total of stitches. Uh, <laughs> a total stitch count of 14. Now we're going to maintain the stitch count of 14 for five more rows. So you just chain one, turn your work, make a single crochet into the next stitch, and one single crochet in every stitch back across. So you're going to keep repeating the chain one, turn your work, and single crochet in every stitch across until you have a total of five more rows. 
So it will be six total. We already finished the first row. So you need five more of the stitch count of 14 and then come back. So now you should have a total of six rows and we're ready for the next row. So for the next row we're going to decrease by one stitch. So when you finish you're not going to chain one. You're just going to turn your work and then you're going to go into the next stitch over and make a single crochet. And then you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across. And when you finish this row, you should have a total stitch count of 13. So now you have a stitch count of 13. For the next three rows, you're going to be decreasing the stitch by only one. So for the next row, you're going to just turn your work make a single crochet into the next stitch and one single crochet in every stitch across and after you finish this row you should have a stitch count of 12. So now you have a stitch count of 12. Go ahead and turn your work, go into the next stitch over, make a single crochet and you make one single crochet in every stitch across and when you finish this row you should have a stitch count of 11. So now you should have a stitch count 11. Turn your work, make a single crochet into the next stitch, and one single crochet into every stitch across, and after you finish this row, you should have a stitch count of 10. So now we're going to maintain the stitch count of 10 for three rows. So you're going to chain one, turn your work, make a single crochet into the next stitch, and one single crochet into every stitch back across maintaining your stitch count of 10 and you're going to repeat that until you have three total rows this count is your first one so you need three total of stitch count of 10 you chain one turn your work and make a single crochet in every stitch and you want this is number one so we need two more after this row where you have a stitch count of 10 so I'm just going to go ahead and work it with you this is my last stitch. So that was one finished with the ten. Chain one, turn your work, and here's my second. Go into the next stitch over for a single crochet, and we're maintaining the stitch count of ten. The chain one counts as a stitch. So go ahead, finish these last two rows with a stitch count of ten, and then come back. So now this is how your work should look, and we're ready to finish up the ear. So after that last row of stitch count of 10. Now you're just going to turn your work. Go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, make a single crochet, and one single crochet in every stitch back across, and when you finish this row you should have a stitch count of 9. And you're going to keep turning your work, decreasing by one stitch each row until you get down to a stitch count of 2 and then come back. So now I have a stitch count of 3. I'm going to turn my work, I'm going to work into the next stitch over, a single crochet, and then a single crochet into the next stitch. So now I have a stitch count of two. I'm going to turn my work and then slip stitch into the next stitch. So go right into that next stitch, yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. So now you're going to need a total of four of these. One, two, three, four, two for each ear, and then come back. So now we're going to make the inner portion of the ear. So we only need two of these. I finished one. I'm going to show you the other one on video tutorial. So you can use any pastel pink that you want. If you like this one, this is a red heart metallic pink. You can see the glitter in it. I really like it. So that is one. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make that. So you're going to take your yarn. You're going to fold it over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for your slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and cinch the loop around your crochet hook. And then you're going to make a chain of 11. I'm just going to show you four of them on video tutorial. So you yarn over and go through the loop for one, two, three, Four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 11, and then come back. So after you finish your chain of 11, and mine measures approximately two and a half inches in width, 
Then we're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook and one single crochet in every stitch back across and when you finish this first row you should have a stitch count of 10. So now this is how my work looks and we're going to maintain the stitch count of 10 for three more rows. So you're going to chain one, turn your work, the chain one counts as the first stitch for this row. You're going to go into the next stitch over and make a single crochet and one single crochet in every stitch back across and you should still maintain a stitch count of 10. So go ahead, finish the three rows. This is the first one of the stitch count of 10 by chaining one, turning your work and making a single crochet in every stitch. So go ahead and finish the three rows maintaining the stitch count of 10 and then come back. Okay, so now this is how my work looks so far. Now you're just going to turn your work, make a single crochet into the next stitch, and one single crochet into every stitch across, and you're going to keep turning, decreasing the stitch count by one until you get a stitch count of two, and then come back. So now I just finished, I have a stitch count of three. I'm going to turn my work, make a single crochet into the next stitch, and then slip stitch into the last stitch. Then I'm going to go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. And then you need two of these triangles. So now you're going to take your ear and we're going to sew the pink portion onto one of the panels, of the ear panels, that's the front of the ear. So you just take your sparkle pink or pastel pink and you want to line it up so that you have one row showing on the bottom because you want to be able to sew the ear in place with the purple colored yarn so you don't show the pink or purple on pink when you sew the ear in place on the dog. So one oh, let's loose yarn end. So you want it at least one round up you want some purple showing on the bottom. You'll see what I mean when you go to sh sew the ear in place. And you want to make sure it's centered where you want. So you don't want it crooked. So just center it how you want it to look. Then bring the loose yarn ends towards the wrong side. And then you need the same colored yarn, pastel pink, or my, in my case it's the metallic pink. To sew it in place. So then once you have your yarn, just come up from the wrong side and then tie a knot. And then I just sew all around the edge of the inner ear, inner portion of the ear. Just going in and out and just sew all around the edge. So now you should have the two front panels of the ear finished. Go ahead and get your back panels. You need one back panel for each. And then you're going to line up the back panel. Make sure you cover any loose yarn ends in between the two panels. And then I usually will tie, line up the two loose yarn ends at the tip of the point and then just tie a knot. Then you're going to take and join, tuck any loose yarn ends towards the inside of the ear. Then you're going to take and join, take your crochet hook, go into the bottom stitch of the bottom corner, bring up a loop with your main color yarn, grab my loop, then take and chain one, and then tie a knot. And you're going to bury your loose yarn ends as you crochet. So just take the loose yarn ends and lay them across the side. And we're going to make one single crochet into the next stitch. Go behind the loose yarn ends, bring up a loop, and make a single crochet. 
And then you're just going to make one single crochet evenly spaced along the side of the ear. Just evenly space one single crochet going behind your loose yarn ends, crocheting both the inner ear and the outer ear together. And when you reach the point of the ear, come back and I'll show you how I went around the point of the ear. So this is how my work looks so far. And I made it to the tip of the ear. So when you reach the tip of the ear, you may want to put two single crochet into the same stitch before the point. And then I just tuck the loose yarn ends towards the middle or center of the ear and then put a single crochet in the point of the ear and then a sing two single crochet into the stitches just after around the point. So there's one and two. And then you can resume making one single crochet evenly spaced down the opposite side of the ear. Make sure you grab both panels, the front and the back, and then make a single crochet. And then you repeat the same process for the other ear.